Face Productions presents Brad and Elkrever's Well of Remembrance with hosts Brad Godfrey and Elkrever Schaltfinger. We're continuing our uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. episode that we did for Medieval Shop with their center boss, their Umbo. We're going to continue it with an actual S.H.I.E.L.D. construction video. That's right. To show you how to make a S.H.I.E.L.D. to put this on. And instead of just cutting out a piece of uh, half-inch plywood, you know, like most people would do, which is not period at all, we're going to actually show you how to make one out of quarter-inch planking. And although it is a form of plywood, it's basically planking. Because we're using like cabinetry material. We're using a real thin quarter inch wood that has a thin veneer on it. Furthermore, we're also going to show you how to use linen the correct way rather than just stretching it over that plywood and tacking it down. We're going to show you how to use laminate. a milk glue or laminate it down so that it's more like a Kevlar or a plastic. This and promised to be a really interesting video today, guys. And we'll start going over some materials here. Basically, we're going to use uh, Elmer's wood glue. Now, it's based on a 1936 formula that's a casein glue, or milk glue, or cheese glue, like historically would have been used. Now, that would be hard to make a lot of back in the day if you knew what you were doing and you had all the materials. But most of y'all out there are going to have a hard time getting a, a material that's going to work properly out of milk yourself. You can do it, but sit there and produce a large amount of it. It's easier just to go buy a large quantity like this. And you will go through a you lot of this. You will go through a lot because this is a laminate. It's a lot like Kevlar or something, the way we're reinforcing the shield to make it legal. And so you're going to need to probably have two sold. containers of this, guys. Right. So and be maybe, sure your list that you buy yourself the large $15. You can get the City Hardware Store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Sutherland's. You're going to need one of these. And then for your finer detail work, you're going to need a dispenser with the squirt bottle on it. Uh, then you're going to need some faux linen or real linen. This is uh, important. You get the city of your fabric stores. Uh, this has already been trimmed. We got up. cheaper faux linen. This is like a, it's not really a faux linen. This is a broadcloth. It's very much linen-like. It will work if the fibers are strong enough. It's going to work if it's a tight enough weave. As it is real linen weight as well. Real linen is extremely expensive per yard, and you're going to need probably about anywhere from two to three yards just for a one for a exactly. one layer covering. Uh, for larger amounts of covering, you might need, you know, anywhere from six to, to, to ten yards, uh, to cover yourself to make sure that you have enough. If you make a mistake, you'll have some extra. Right, at least one extra yard. Yeah, so all the cover you have one extra yard. Like he said, if you're going to cover it two times, you'd need two yards, theoretically, but you'd need an extra yard to make sure you have excess. extra cloth if you you're make mistakes overlap. or if yes. you need an overlap, right. You're going to need a three foot Dowels, what we're using to make our handle out of. Make sure this is the one inch. Uh, yeah, we used the oak one, I believe, here. Oak is a period wood. Most shields were not made out of oak. You can use oak cabinetry plywood, this plywood here that we have, this quarter inch. But this one here is birch. Birch is period. I mean, they did have some period shields. We haven't found hardly any of linden wood, even though it's uh, mentioned as linden shields. We haven't found many of it. Any wood that will give. A lot of people say oak won't work. It, I, I've experimented with it. It will work. And if you get it to show you something, the grain, where it shows the grain going up and down, that's how you're going to want it on the shield because this is a thin veneer. This really doesn't count. The only wood that really counts is the planking. In the center, if you look, 90% of the entire thing is the planking going left and right, which is actually this way horizontally. It's the way we're going to reinforce it with our brace this way when we get done. This is just a little piece that was cut out of one. Uh, the thing you're going to need also is you're going to need a pencil and string so we can show you how to draw because of course you're not going to have a template or anything to cut to to get the size of shield you want. I like a three foot shield. I like them fairly large. I believe they were used a lot especially in war. Uh, that was the idea of making a, a uh, construction where it's lightweight but strong. Exactly. Uh, you'll also need for your rimming. This is optional but you can use it if you want to. This is uh, for quarter inch plywood. Uh, this is an aluminum border. Right, it's, a, it's a C channeling. Now, the thing, the reason we're using this is if we could find light enough, uh, steel, iron, anything, uh, 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 copper, bronze, anything that was, of course, bronze would be very expensive, but if we could find one thin enough that was lightweight to do it, because when they did do any kind of rimming that we can tell, it was very thin rimming. It was like a, a 
thin rim. You could make your own somehow. So Something you might want to know about this, guys, is that you can only find these usually in about, uh, these pieces you can usually find in about nine foot sections. So be sure that you buy yourself an extra it. section because you're going to run out of space, as we're going to show you later. Which you can buy in shorter pieces, too. You, right, you can't buy shorter pieces, but you're going to need a if little extra. If you're going to do this, this. option here, uh, you could decide to get rawhide, which this is not a rawhide video. We're showing linen lamination. Rawhide's another way to cover a shield, and it's excellent. But you could use just rawhide, like get the bones from the store. I've seen people do this. Soak them in water. Uh, stretch them out because it ends up being strips and you can tack that around the outside and that will reinforce the edge nicely. Right, we're just going to show you a slightly easier method. This is probably going to do right, it for you. Right, right. Make sure you have some power tools available, guys. You're really going to want to have yourself a Dremel, a uh, uh, drill. for cutting the fabric. Uh, sander. Sander, works, sander works, works great, great. for the now, handle. You use the hand sanders. They, they have those. If you want to be really cheap. This is going to be for the handle here. But the, these, these power sanders are a lot quicker for what we're doing. You're going to need a drill. You will, yes, you will need a drill. Uh, we're going to use a Dremel. You could use bolt cutters. You could use or a hacksaw. hacksaw, which we have a hacksaw too, because that's the best way if you're doing aluminum remy to cut that without damaging it too badly. And you we'll want to get the hacksaw for the aluminum remy if you choose to do that. You're also going to need a, a jigsaw. Uh, jigsaw is the best way to cut these circles out in a hurry. And this is what I will say, and we say this a lot in some of the different reenactment group signs because I'm quite anachronistic. If they would have had it, they would have used it. You're right about that. But if that. you want to use a keyhole type saw and cut this out, which is what they'd have to do to cut some kind of planking out, but normally they'd have planks and glue them together as they got done. So That's right. It, they'd be cutting in smaller pieces. You could cut them with other tools. But if you want to do that, go for it. It's going to be a, a pain. Well, we want you to do this as quick as possible. So right. let's, let's, get a let's try to use as period tools as possible. And try to use power tools. To set this wonderful shield boss here from uh, Medieval Shop Fog, what we're going to use to have steel rivets, because steel rivets are quite expensive and hard to get hold of at times, we're going to use nails. We're going to cut nails down with our Dremel tool, and we're going to use 8th inch washers, fender washers, which are relatively cheap, as rivets, and in the actual handle we'll probably do some cut off, bent over nails, because those were period as well in the shields we right. find. They put nails through and bent them off. And I know these nails don't look like period cast nails, but in the shield with this on the front, they look fine. They have the strength you need. They're going to do what you want. They're going to have a really period look. And like you so said, I think they're these going to are do just 16-penny nails or they're just basic nails. Very simple. Yeah, you get a very right. cheap And you're going to need some uh, saw horses possibly or something to set up on a table and something to use as an animal to set your rivets or bend them over. We, we like the use of these these uh, uh, dumbbell kind of weights. Yeah. Uh, they work fine. But if you have an animal, even better. Uh, anything like that will do. And depending on the reenactment group you're in, uh, some of them require, it depends on the kingdom you're in, if you'll say you're in a society of creative anachronism, they may require hose. We don't recommend using heater hose for cars. No. This stuff is extremely heavy. We don't recommend using uh, we don't like recommend garden hose. Garden hose, that's terrible, it tears up. What we recommend is you go get this irrigation hose, and if you look at this, you can see that it has nylon threading in it. It's clear, and let's say you wanted to put this over your shield. It doesn't show up much. It's very lightweight, and I'm not sure. I think this is quarter-inch hose is the center. It's, or it's, it's either quarter or half-inch. I think it might be half-inch. I'm not sure what they consider it. I'm not seeing it on it. But you'll, you'll notice it's small. You stretch it out as you put it on, and you cut it. We started cutting the edging of this one. But we'll talk about this later, and it just slips over the edge, and it doesn't, it doesn't take up a lot of room. It, 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 it covers what they want legally and allows you to do it. Not all require that. Some of the way we're going to show you the basic shield with the linen over it will be enough. I think I think we've right. pretty much covered all the materials, right? We've covered everything. Everything. We, can, else. we can get into construction. All right, well, let's get to work, bro. All right, let's go. Our, our first step today, guys, is to go ahead and show you how to how to create your circle and cut it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this piece of uh, aluminum. So you don't know, use any kind of straight edge that's long enough. We just happen to use this because the only thing we had that was long enough. And we're going to draw from corner to corner to find the center. You have it right on the corner. Yep. Yeah. Right on. I got mine right on. It doesn't have right. to be the exact center per se, but close enough so you have enough material. If you have a partner like like we have, uh, you can pass your cuts on. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, have your hoose score. I'll help you. Make sure we don't run out of material. We got this exact center point. Now what we're going to do is get a nail. The same nails we're going to use for other stuff. Oh here, I got your nail right here. 
Alright, and we're going to take this, take your hammer. It doesn't have to be this kind of hammer, but we're going to knock a hole in the center to tie our string to. And if it damages the center a little bit, on the back side splits a little bit, you should be okay because that's going to be cut out anyway you're throwing that piece away. That's going to be for your uh, center grip. There's a good way to do it. We'll set here, we'll stretch a piece of string over it, how big we want it. Because none of this has to be done with actual measurements. It can be done with just string and links. But we don't want it too long or too short, so what we can do is we have a pencil with string on it here, or any kind of marking implement. We can pretty much do it like this. Get this twisted where we want it. And we want half this much, not the full amount, so. And we want, it's kind of difficult sometimes at times, yeah. Make sure it's the right amount. So it could take a moment for you to establish exactly the, the amount of I weight I would say that's want. about right. See, now he's looped it over the nail here. The smaller it's going to be easier to do this way. Bigger. If you've ever used a, a compass in, in, in grade school or in junior high or, or whenever you might have used a compass in geometry, this is pretty much the, the ancient way of using a compass. Yeah, it could stretch and you can angle this, the. Uh, but you can kind of see if you're about right. As you can see here, that looks about right, does it not? That does look about right. I think that'll be fine. If we cut okay. that out, it's not going to... I try to make it a hair smaller, but not too small, because you don't want something to rub your hand either when you have it in there. Right. Now, the next step is to get that outer circle done, right. and then we'll move on to the It should be about the exact same length as this dowel, because this is exactly three feet. It's like a quarter, we've got a, maybe a quarter inch total of gap, but... Well, also make sure it's right both ways, especially this way. This is your up and down. How's that? That looks good. It's not overlapping, sticking out? No, it's not sticking out. you got good. about a quarter inch we there. got to. Uh, now it's going to be cutting this out. We're going to so, have to get the drill to uh, punch holes to start. And I like normally cutting the center out first because it gives you something I can grab a hold of while you're turning it. And cutting it. Alrighty, we've got our drill here. Now what we're going to do with this drill is we're going to put holes in the center, but inside the drawing. Of course, you don't want to accidentally go past your line. You want to stay inside your line. So what we're going to do is drill a few holes to start them off here. You could use a bigger drill bit to do this, so you can just, but we're using a smaller one because it's easier to put in. I'm just going to kind of go side by side and waller it out because I'm used to doing it. I know that's not how you would normally do it. A lot of people would recommend drilling a big hole or use a hole saw to start a hole or whatever you like. But this is the uh, same style drill bit. Yeah, he's got enough to start his cut there. Yeah. center hole for your boss. And you can actually try your boss down and see how you did. And the way to do that is to take the boss, slip it on here, see how it fits over it. That looks like we did. Yes, which is birch.
do this on his perch. We also use oak sometimes or whatever we get a hold of this good. And we're going to go ahead and put our first layer of linen on, which normally I would do the back, but it doesn't matter totally. Uh, I may just take the lid off this and pull it. That would probably be the best idea. And a lot of times, that's that. A lot of times, guys, that's why you want to have the the large uh, fifteen dollar jug. This is the uh, one gallon. Uh, typically, on this stage, you want to just open up the top and just but pour. Between the fabric and the actual glue is what you're, what's creating your effect. It's very much like rawhide. If you took a piece of it off and you played with it you'd realize that it behaves like rawhide. And even rawhide has the same drawback and advantage. If the shield gets wet, all the old shields did. Any adhesives used, because they would be either hide or wood glue, You don't need any special tools to spread. Your hands will do just fine. This is like any regular Elmer's glue. You can just rub oh, it glue. off. You can use any wood glue, even the cheaper brands, whatever deal you get, as long as it's the same type of glue. Smells the same, feels the same. Just I've, I've dealt with real no glues that I've met. They smell, feel, and look exactly the same. Wow, that looks, that looks like it's caked on there pretty heavily, Fran. It has to be. It's going to be absorbed into the cloth. The cloth actually absorbs it. So if you don't put enough, then you won't end up with the right effect. So what yeah, we're going to do is we have that. one section. Uh, uh, it's about a yard section, a little bit longer. And we need to put it on this way. We're going to stretch it down. What we do is you do not want to touch this after you put it on like uh, with anything hard or harsh. You'll end up causing bubbles. You'll cause problems. Hopefully yours is pressed out a little more than ours and it's got wrinkles. Right. right. Now, you, but, yeah, you don't want to use any kind of edging or rolling pins or anything like that. You just I have like, tried all that stuff before thinking it would be better. But what you end up with is you end up with it sticking to the instrument and making bubbles. And bubbles are bad. Because what you want is you want this to adhere down to that glue. As you can see, this is coming down tight like a snare drum. And as we're tugging, we're tr tugging on the edges against the rounded edge of the shield. As right. It's coming around the edge of the blade. The glue will even come up through the fabric. Yes, it'll this start normal, seeping through. It'll is, bleed right is, through. This is perfectly all right. That's what you want. You, what you're doing is you're making a type of plywood that doesn't exist. You're making a plywood that I, I don't know if it exists. Maybe somewhere they have See, something. See, now, now we're getting some seeping here. Right? I, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Who knows? Someone may have done this, but you're making a plywood that actually has uh, fibers. And use the back of your nails is what I like doing. And just do this number. See how I'm like, uh, even if those little lines are in there, they're fine. They're going to come right thing. out. Right, but this way they don't stick, and we're just barely pressing down the glue. Like yeah, that. now you're not using any real pressure. Right, because if you a little accidentally bit, push just... down and your fingers stick to this, it will pull up and make a bubble underneath the fabric. That's, That's right, we don't want that. We want to avoid any kind of bubbling. And what or... you would do if you're going to do multiple layers, you would let this one totally dry, or at least about four or five hours, maybe six hours, depending on the temperature of the top out. Uh, the humidity where you're at, the, the dryness, how hot it is. Uh, I don't recommend trying to speed up the drying because you you could screw something up trying to heat it up too much or something if you put it in like a... I don't know, who knows, maybe if you uh, do painting or something and you have a friend that has an area to dry paint, you might be able to put it in there if they had a special room or something for it. But you can even restretch it after you've done the nail thing and you stretch again. But this is making sure that the fabric's uh, picking up the glue. Is what we're trying to do. That's it. You want it to bleed through the fabric. Right. That's why I put a lot on here to take it off. So we, we're going with one layer, so we want to do a really good job. Now this is going to take a little while to dry, guys. And when you're done drying this side, then you're going to want to flip the shield over. And when you flip the shield over, you want to repeat the process. The exact same process on the back side and let it dry. Now, and this is if you just want more layers, two layers, then you would continue after that. And since I normally doesn't make it that much thicker, I just make it all the way to the edge and cut it off at the edge. The front side, I leave a little gap, so when you put on the actual rimming, you have excess uh, cloth, and you fold it over and glue it on the back side. Right. Now, we're going to show you that in the next phase uh, when Correct. we get this dry piece ready for you.
Correct. All right, well, uh, let's let the strike ready to come back and see what happens. Sure. All right. Yeah. All righty, we're back here, and we have the shield with both layers. We're doing two layers because this would be good for an SCA reenactment shield, or uh, if you're going to do steel, maybe you want to do two layers on front and back. Uh, we, you, can, you can go as many as you like, but remember, it adds a lot of weight to the shield because the glue uh, has to set into the fabric. But we've got two layers here. One goes all the way to the edge where we're going to do this one. And the other one, we left plenty to overlap, because that's going to overlap our rimming. And if you didn't want to do rimming, you could overlap it from one way when it dries and put it on, overlap it the other way and, and glue it all the way around the edge, and then use a like a rawhide or something, or right. hose. But with this thin of wood, it's easy to crack. So that's why we recommend the aluminum C-channeling, quarter C-channeling, or if you can find something like that, or even if you wanted to, if you want to take your time and take some kind of metal flashing and make your own little rimming that's possible too I mean all this is put a rope around the edge I've seen people do that like glue a uh, some kind of uh, rope that they can press down against it and then wrap it over with this method works as well right all right something to help protect that edging that's what we're talking about here right now we're going to be moving on to the next stage we're going to cut the hole out and then trim the amount we want left over to but what I'm doing is I'm just cutting this out there's a little overhang and it doesn't have glue on it it's not sharp it's fine who cares it's Nobody's really going to see it anyway. Once you have the boss on, and uh, you can cut it as neat as you want. If you want to say it with an exacto razor, and get it's it right. perfect, and all that. That's fine, but it's not going to really make any difference. The boss is going over there to hold fabric down and so on. Right now, as we come to this trim section here, we want to make sure we have enough to overlap. Right, but as you can see, when we glued the front section on, this right. is the front of the shield. You'll notice that there's not glue all the way edge. This is still bare. And it's right. not glued down. This is for the reason that Brian was telling you that we put that seam channeling on. It's going to go here, and then later when we glue, we're going to have enough after we trim here to overlap and glue to the back. So right. we're so going to have to be careful how much we trim off. Right. I'm going to go ahead and figure out the smallest part here because that's about all we need. The smallest I've got. I don't know where that's going to be. Probably up here where I accidentally didn't leave enough. You have to be very careful to leave extra. See, we're going to get it about there, and we're going to figure out what that is, and that should be plenty. That's about three inches or three tums. We're using old Viking measurement, tum is the width from here to here. We'll be making a joke about that a little while we're doing our channeling. But uh, we're just going to trim it like that all the way around. You don't need too much overhang, but uh, the more, of course, it's more reinforcement, but it's also more weight. More glue has to be absorbed. So we're going about three, which I'm using inches, this increment here, about the length of my finger. Do that. That should be it all the way around. And we should have enough if you look. When we go to do this, we can pull it over and glue it down. And if you've got little jaggies and stuff, and you don't like that, that's fine, but it doesn't really matter. It's all going to be glued down. So it's not a problem. We pretty much got that stage done. Now we need to get the channeling ready to put on. All right. Let's yeah. get that done. Let's get it going. All right. Now we're working with our aluminum seat channeling. Uh, as you see, this shield had some underneath the uh, hose. And the hose is being held on, like I said, about three inches or three toms in with uh, Sydney. It's hard to see on this side, but maybe if we flip around. That's if you want to do that. I drill the holes in deep. And I actually lace it on. I'm hoping you can see that there. And then this is the hose we're talking about splitting and putting over. This is not even lined with uh, anything at back or front. Uh, there's no linen that's on it or nothing laminate on it. And it still works very well. I mean, I know this looks horrible, but I mean, it lasted for years. So, of course, we, I didn't use as much as some of the other shields. But anyway, the other scale. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. We start off. This is one tongue, one inch. So you want about one inch every single time. It's not necessary to go all the way back to the back of the metal. It's the rimming. You can go back to about a quarter inch of it, and you're okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sawing. Going so far, and see how that's not even all the way back? That's fine. It will bend. I don't know if you can see that, but it will actually bend. Uh, the whole idea is to get it to make a circle shape. And the only reason we're doing one inches is we're not taking out very big sections of it, just the width of the blade. So we don't want to... We can get too much, but we allow it to, allow it to actually do its thing, to uh, curve, to make that shape. Now, as, as uh, El Grimmer said earlier, 
you're not going to have a, you're not going to have a long enough piece. That kind of line that that thing, or ten or nine? I can't remember. It comes in nine. It comes in uh, nine foot sections. Right. So you're not going to have enough to uh, go all the way around a three foot circle. If you know how pie works, and no, you're not going to have, be able to do that circumference. So what you have to do is buy an extra little piece to finish it off, which put that on the back side. I recommend another three foot section at least. I need a total of twelve feet to work with. The only thing you want to be careful of when you get to this stage, you're this far into it. You do not want this to bend. Any kind of way. Even where you touch, you don't want to bend it back and forth. Right. You want to keep this together if you can, because if you can get this around the shield without bending it much, it is way stronger. Especially like I was saying, on if it's an SCA or anything like that, you want to make it stronger. Having the women this way. Uh, rawhide, if you use those type of bones, and we're talking about that, you didn't use the aluminum, it becomes hard as a rock as well. It's very fast. Finished. Alright, well, let's uh, rim the shield. Okay, now we're going to rim the shield. There we go. Alright, we have our aluminum rimming now, our C channeling that's been cut. Uh, we have the shield where this is the front side, and we've left a piece that can be folded over. The back side is totally to the edge, which is fine, it helps reinforce it and it will still fit on there. You could even do an extra layer on both sides. We're doing one layer here, which makes it easy for us to tell which way to go with because the grain's all going straight up and down on the veneer sides. The actual slats means they're running this way, horizontally. You can also tell by, you know, putting it against you, pressing, it'll be real strong one way, and the other way it'll bend more. So, but uh, what we're gonna do is start putting this on. Uh, you would normally want to put it all the way around first and test it. But I'm pretty confident it's going to work because I know exactly where I cut each section. And you want normally to put the extra little piece you have to fill in with towards the back side is what I do. Because this, this top and the front is going to get hit more on the edging than anything else because they're going to try to get around the shield this way. If you're tilting the shield out, they're going to try to hit around. They're usually not going to hit as much towards the back. If they do, it won't have as much power. So let's go ahead and start putting this on. I'm going to start putting glue on here with the squirt bottle. And you can just put a lot of glue, it doesn't matter. We can just start putting a nice big old bead underneath it. This will help seed it, will help strengthen the edge. I'll set this down here. We're going to figure a guess about, oh, you can tell me so. We're going to guess about where we need to start with this, how big a section we're going to have. We start putting this on, and you start rolling it on, that's what you do. Start crimping it down and rolling it on. And as you start going, you'll notice it's, it's working like you want it to. Might have done a little bit more and put it on. But it should be working like you want it to. If the glue runs down, it doesn't matter, you're going to be doing more to it shortly. Uh, secret here, keep this to stay on. I should have went all the way around it first before I continued, but we'll get this to work. Never fear. Uh, I should have put it around it first and crimped a piece. That helps a lot. But I'm going to put it all the way around and pull it back off to put the... And see if I judge it about right. Yes, that's about right. I'm going to come back to that point. I'll show you what I meant about. So as you can see, he's he's already shaped the aluminum. Right. I want a pair of pliers though. Let me get off camera and grab one. Okay. What I'm going to do is to make sure this stays down. I'm going to crimp a few of these in because sometimes it's a little wider than your actual layers, and the back side will probably fit tighter. But that'll allow this to stay down as you're fitting it on. Now we're gonna figure out where I stopped putting glue and put more glue. And like I said, if you need to crimp more in other areas, just go for it. This is already fitting out so tight it doesn't want to come loose. That's a good sign. Now we're gonna start putting more glue in the And 
we're going to do is show you how to mark this and cut it. It's done the exact same way. But what you do is just slip it on, snuff it up right over, slip it right on in. And you move it, roll it along the edge, and you will get right here to where you need it. And it's so simple, you just mark it there. If you cut that line right there, it will fit perfectly when you shield. If you saw what I just did, all I did is roll it. And that's going to be your last section to put on, and we're going to go ahead and do that. But it's the same process as the rest, and it just glues on, and then we're going to go to the uh, actual finishing stage of pulling this over and gluing it down. Shouldn't be anything big. It's pretty simple. It just takes quite a bit of glue. Now we're going to start the very front, where we left the little lip not glued. This strengthens the front of the shield. It helps hold the covering on. If it accidentally glued down from you putting it on, don't worry about it. Just go with it. Now, take this and we're going to come by here and kind of smear it. It's like we did everywhere else. We put a layer so we can adhere to it and adhere it to the uh, metal as well. want to use a lot of force, just kind of push it down with the back of your nails works great. You don't want bubbles. All right, we're going to flip this over, and now that should be on there fairly well, and we're going to start pulling this up and see how much we have to overlap, which is never going to be even all the way around, no matter how well you try it. There's going to be areas where you don't have as much or have more. Now, if you want to trim that, you can, or you can choose to just go ahead and glue it down, which should be fine. Which I'm probably going to choose just to go ahead and glue it. I may, I may trim a little bit. It looks like I have way too much in a few places. But if that happens, then just go back and trim it off. And it also helps to trim it while you see it, so that you know what you're trimming. Because it's going to kind of fold up and bunch up on its own as we go. Which is normal. But if you see any little jagged edges you don't like, some like I don't like this here, just take it on off. The rest of it looks pretty good. So we see how far in we have. Then on the back side, it's about the same. It's just when it's bunching, it doesn't look the same. It's about what we cut, about three inches all the way around. So what we do now? What we're going to do is shield has to be a hair bigger than 36 inches because the hair with the rooming and everything. We're going to lay this on here and we want to make sure you can see the grain since we only have one layer of uh, linen on here. Now if you do multiple layers you might want to mark this uh, skialda or shield somehow so you know which side you want up because you have the piece that's added on on one side and you want the continuing flowing piece on the front side towards where you're going to be holding if you can. It doesn't really matter if you're, you know, usually holds up pretty well anyway. Uh, what we're going to do 
through here is we're going to line this up where it's as even as we can get it straight up and down with that grain because that means that the slats are running the right way because the veneer grain remember is nothing that's just the pretty much the thin veneer that makes it look good on the outside the slats are actually running this way the way it's sliding it so we're going to reach under here or let's reach we're marking the front side so we can see uh, where the handle is going to be because what we're going to do is grind this down so it'll lay flat against the shield we're going to uh, use a sander to sand it down you could use an electric planer i'm sure if you're careful but this allows it to fit flat we're going to do a little shaping on this dowel so it actually fits right and we have our marking right there so let's get our sander out we're going to have to set this to one side this off so there's nothing sharp it doesn't look like just a plain dowel it looks like it's hand shaped uh, you can do whatever you want with this grip it's up to you if you want to play with it we're deciding it's like a round grip on mine so we're going to lay this on here and you've got the handle somewhat sunk in you don't want to take quite half off just enough because you still want all this strength to to hold the slats from going this way because this veneer will not do it they'll break so this has to go from top to bottom especially on this design. This is your back brace and your handle. All right, it looks good. Now we're about to the phase of uh, attaching the boss and the handle. You have your handle done, and it's time to put it on. Well, what we're going to do here to figure out where the, the nails or the rivets go to hold the center boss and the handle to the shield, two main ones that are on top and bottom of the six holes, we're going to line it up, look, we can even look underneath if we want, under the shield. I have a good lighting here coming straight down where I see the holes, the shadow. Uh, so pretty much I'm thinking this is in the right location. Go ahead and put a mark here. And put a mark here. And that's where I'm going to drill the holes. Now the reason we're drilling holes and we're not uh, just nailing it straight through, oak splits. Almost any wood at this size, a dowel will split. You don't want to do that. That's not something you're, you're after. So this should work. But we'll go ahead and get our drill. I'm going to go with right there. I think that's going to work. I'm going to go right here. What we do is we start our hole. about 
drilling through the shield with the lamination on it, it's not going to split wood or anything. Shouldn't cause any damage at all. Now we get to see if we did good. Uh, we're going to go with our nails that we're using as rivets. And these are going to come up, try to use the same two holes you picked. Hopefully they're all the same all the way around. They should be. But this is where we're going to see how it works. All right. And we've got our nails coming up through. Uh, what we're going to do now is use the Dremel to cut them the length we want. You don't have to, but I've already put these underneath. The uh, uh, five pound weights that are going to be working as an anvil. So that way it's even and they're on here. Uh, we're going to measure about a tongue, like we were talking about earlier, about an inch. Or an increment, like the tip of your finger. We don't need exact measurements. Now we the other one, exact same way. you do is you're going to go ahead and put glue under the handle. So we'll put a little bit on there. Uh, if you want to put a lot, you can. I'm going to put a nice string here. That's just to give a little extra uh, strength to it. If I got that straight enough in the right spot, it looks like it. I'm going to go ahead and slide it down now. Put it back on just like you took it off. Looks like I got it in about the right spot, so it's not bad. There's excess around it, just smear it in. Now when we go to hammer these, it's going to pull it tight. And you're going to do a series of, I would say approximately two more here and here. But we're going to go ahead and put these in right now. And this is period on the old shields that I'm doing this. We're going to have to use actual rivets here, like use washers to rivet it to this, but for here, this is perfectly all right. And you can go ahead and set this right in there. And the reason we're pounding it so far down into this wood, the handle, is because then it's nothing sharp, nothing anybody can complain about. It's going to come out easily, and I may just pick it up and flip it around so I can get the right angle I want for the next one. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to knock it that way, away from the head. And be careful not to crack it, but you're going to... Basically hammer it right into the wood. That way there's nothing really sharp sticking out. Nothing to complain about on uh, Marshall or anything. And these should not unbend, especially with it glued like this. And as you see, it pulls it right in tight. Now we're going to continue by doing the next holes about midway in between. And then about two to three inches down, we'll do the next set up here. And then in the same way.
side here now and we're going to drill the holes from the front side. We've already got the handle side. You saw how we do that. And the handle's on here very securely. It will not move, budge, or anything. It should, and you shouldn't have any protrusions from those, uh, those nails you've been over because they should be flush. They should be beaten into the wood. But be careful how you do that so you don't break your dowel. Thing about this, the uh, not so you don't have to worry about wood splintering, splitting, or anything like that. Okay, we've got all of these in. I'm going to flip it over. We should have all the holes we need. Now we need his waist to set. And may I add, his boss is very well made, the one from um, Medieval Shop. Uh, they did a really good job that you're not going to have to worry you do your hole just right, you've got plenty of lead way on it. You're not going to wind up that short on the edge of the shield or something. So we got this lined up correctly. These are our anvils, so we're doing this. I might be sorry. It should work. Let me grab another one of our pieces. I'll slide this on through. Make sure it's on top of the anvil and we're going to boss on it. Now we're going to do on this, this is a little bit different. We need our, uh, we need one of our washers and these are eighth inch in the center. What's the size nails we got? If you check this out, it will fit. It's a poor man's rivet, so to speak. Might have to flush that down a little bit better. You don't want to just bend the nails on this part because it's too too short a depth and they'll work their way out. And no, we don't want that. So you want to cut it off with just a little sticking up, not much, because this is hard to, to knock down steel over. Expensive roots, you know, steel roots can be expensive for what they're working with. They use nails or washers to work for it. Well, there you have it. We have this one completed. It's very nice. Yeah, what a beauty. It's lightweight. We only have one layer of linen on the front and back. Uh, that, uh, the only thing you might have to do with this to fight, let's say, in the SCA, is you might need to put your hose around it. In that case, like I said, get this uh, the PVC hose with the uh, for irrigation with the uh, uh, what is that in there? The uh, uh, it's got the uh, nylon. Yeah, the nylon it. threading. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've been working, working all day. This has been an all-day project. Just, just so you know, guys. Three inches in. Make sure they're far enough apart so you don't cause a perforation and lace it on. You could do that with leather. Uh, if, if they require it, if they don't, you can use it just like this. It depends on your group and your area. Uh, you can use rawhide and just stitch it on and let it shrink, wrap itself on there as it dries. Right. That works as well. Yes. Uh, and that will make it very, very authentic and very period if you want to go around some rawhide. Yeah. Uh, you could use more layers of linen if you like. It will get heavier because it's going to be sat this is going to get saturated again on top and eat up the glue and then it's going to eat up the glue and you're going to eventually have so much glue on here that it's really, really strong. And very, very laminated, but you don't want to make it too heavy. But it ends up, yeah. Uh, now, over time, it starts to lose a little bit of weight. It's 
you got to hold it in your hand. This is a center ball shield. You don't want to get it so heavy that you can't use it. So this is a nice size I like because when you reach out to cut, your hand is covered by the shield. Yeah. That's the whole point to why I believe they use three foot rounds is no matter which position you're in, you're covering your cut. And they normally didn't have a lot of golf and stuff back then. Right. Whereas the smaller shields, it's harder to do that. Your hand protrudes a lot more often and you don't have the same right. protection. So, you know, we, we always like to evaluate the things we make or the things that we get uh, yeah. from, from people or things that we've purchased. And as much as I'd love to take this and put it through its paces uh, through our rigorous testing, uh, I want to be able to save this for SCA use or for steel reenactment oh, use. Yeah. We, don't we don't want somebody to tell us we can't use it. So we have the one we made for medieval shops. Uh, we already Umbo. tested this Umbo with everything. We tested it with uh, uh, arrows. We tested it with uh, uh, SCA weapons. Of course, they did nothing. I mean, there were 10. And we tested it with an actual flail, uh, a uh, horse flail. flail. Yes, yeah, double ball, and all we got was some little dimples in it. That's about it. That's right. So uh, that means this this is dang near bulletproof. I'd say a twenty two would bounce. Off. We haven't tested that. No, yet. yeah, maybe someday. I'm just saying, yeah, it's pretty pretty stout. And then the shield. This is six layers of linen, and we didn't spare the glue. So I mean, it's very very laminated. And strong, so we want to try one with an axe. Yeah, we want to hit with an axe. Let's try throwing an axe at it too. Oh, see definitely, what definitely. Uh, just like Mike Lode's test, where he threw a uh, Francesca. Sure. Yeah, we'll do that. The Francesca. Well, let's, and maybe we could throw in maybe a javelin or something. That'd definitely, kind of cool. definitely. Let's go out and do that, and we'll see what happens. This one, we'll leave it set here and cure a little bit better, and we'll come back and finish it up. And maybe I'll take this out to SCA, and we'll test it out, and I'll show you how it turns out, and I got practice and how it fares. Nice. See you later. Thanks again. See you outside, shop. guys. Thanks Thank you, Eagle shop. shop. This is awesome. Uh, what we're going to do here is test this shield against the uh, Francesca type uh, axe. It's more of a little hand axe, throwing axe. I like. <laughs> but we're going to see how it fares because my, uh, Mike Lodes did one of these and his held up quite well. Let's see what it does here. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'm seeing a little cut. Not much more of anything else. Want to hit it with the axe real quick? Let's do it. I'll try a javelin later if we want. But there's a difference for someone holding a shield and it being on a brace. They always test this stuff on a brace. Have it out like we've got I'm going to swing at this and see if I can chop into the actual shield. But remember, there's a difference between it being on a brace and in a hand and performing like it's supposed to. You can all do it a little more like you're fighting with it. A little more. Yeah. A little, yeah. A little trying to stop this axe. Push out a little bit, you know what I mean? Negative. Oh, we dude. did some damage to it. But how bad? Not bad at all. Not at all. That is excellent. A normal axe would have went clean through the shield. I know you're going to say, well, look, there's some damage. It cracked. But that's how well it reinforced it is. That can be repaired. And he's fine. A, no a normal shield a lot of reenactors make, this would have went through and out the back side and been stuck in the shield. So this proves that the lamination is more than enough. It stopped arrows, it stopped uh, hand axes that were used. Uh, we might try a javelin in a second. Let's do that. I'd like to see All that. Right. All right. A lot of times a javelin, just like the hand axe, was used to weaken the shields as they were running in. They'd throw javelins first, and then they would go into throwing Francesca. This is documented by their enemies, not them all, though, in shield walls. So, documented by Saxon text and so on. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to throw this into a shield, because just like the old Romans, you throw a uh, javelin into the shield to weight it down as you're coming in to make that shield useless. So let's see if I can actually penetrate that shield with a javelin point blank like this. Well, oh, it didn't go deep, but it looks like it busted my old javelin. Let's see how far we made it through. That's it. Not bad. That's not bad at all. Not bad. If it had lived, you know, it might have weighed the shield down enough that I could have well, used it. A lot of these javelins were made out of uh, cheaper metals and stuff, just like mine, just something made to throw. Let's see what we got here. That was a nice impact. Nice Nothing. shot. Nothing at all. I'll try a tippier type shot and try to cut through and see what I can do. Alright. No go. Nah, nice nah. slashing on the shield, but that would get you killed trying to sit here and just cut through it. Yeah, I don't think that's very effective against all this linen. Try a thrust. Let's try a thrust. 
Do hold, it. hold it out. Uh, we lost a rivet. These rivets are bent. That's what we showed you in the video to actually use the washer. Only on these here. The handle hole is great. As y'all can see at our high D. Nothing. Nah. It skipped off. It didn't even try to go in. Let's try one more time. Just all right, here. I'll even give you. A, I'll even make it like a wall for you, so everybody can see this. Oh. We actually got it in, barely. Let's see. And that was me that. bracing the back. We got our Viking winged spear or winged spear. Uh, uh, yeah, brought me up, uh, and we're gonna see what we can do. Or Ding Gare. We're gonna see how I can hit this. He's gonna maybe brace it at the top. What yep. you normally do is use your your uh, your hilt will not let your knuckles hit it if it's made correctly because you've got the T-top and the bottom you've got your T-cozy. So that's one of the reasons it was made that way. We'll show you that in some other videos how they use that to fight with. Today I'm going to use my fist. It's like a handle you can put anywhere you want. So he's going to put his fist there. Hopefully don't hurt his hand against it. I got to right. trust here because he doesn't want this just going through. We hear this in sagas too that they braced it. Not a great idea always, but in this case we'll see what it does. All right, let's do it. Ah! Yeah! Now spears can punch through chains, so this is not that impressive. But we got a nice hole. It actually managed to bust through everything. That took him bracing it, and it took me with all my force and my whole body weight to go through it. So we finally punched a hole in this after all I got from. This is six layers, and it does weigh around nine pounds, the actual amount it would back then. Rawhide might perform better, but I'm not sure. That's pretty dang good. That's pretty decent. Right on.